Hello everyone, this is Mike. Welcome to my channel, Mike the Tech Savvy. This is my full review of the Samsung Galaxy S9. Here I have the normal Galaxy S9 version, not the plus one. This phone is more of an evolution of the previous Samsung flagship, the Samsung Galaxy S8. We now have a polished aluminum frame as opposed to a stainless steel frame last year. We have thicker Gorilla Glass 5 both on front and back. The case is still IP68 certified for both water and dust resistance. There's the new lilac purple color which probably would have matched quite well this wallpaper. The display is now 15% brighter than before. We have a variable aperture camera. I'll try to show it to you right now. Let me just go to pro mode. And here you can manually select the aperture. I'll try to show you the difference. Here you go, the aperture changes. F1.5, F2.4. It's something that pro cameras had for like forever. Now for the first time it has been introduced in the Android realm. It's not the first time when it's been introduced in the smartphone realm. But if I'm not mistaken, Nokia was the first to introduce it with one of its earlier Symbian phones. Along with this, you now have the super slow motion mode, very similar to what Sony has done with the Exit One model last year. So the quality is 720p at 960 FPS. The time permitted to perform this super slow motion isn't that long so you can either choose the auto mode which is described in these slides here or the manual mode this year sony has made an improvement and now you can record super slow mo at the 1080p resolution problem is the memory is still the same so if it's a higher resolution you will have a shorter super slow mo time it's still a novelty but it will probably be developed a bit more in the following years the front camera is still the same as with the s8 so we do have an 8 megapixel f1.7 aperture with autofocus it records video in uh, 2k and for the back camera you have now uhd at 60 fps this is a new mode and also you can choose to film high efficiency video h.265 the chipset in my device is the exynos 9810 with 4 gigabytes of ram this chipset is really powerful you definitely won't have any slow ups in any games with this device while for us and china you will get the snapdragon 845 the battery is a disappointment in my book. There is only a 3000 mAh battery with the same adaptive fast charging as last year, which is quite capable indeed. You do have wireless charging um, for quite some time now, since the Galaxy S6, all the Samsung flagships had wireless charging included. You can either have the single SIM or the dual SIM model. This is the dual SIM one. And of course you have the iris scanner here on top. We have a fingerprint scanner that has a new placement right here below the camera sensor. And for the first time for Samsung we do have stereo speakers. So we do have one speaker here and one on the bottom. They are quite powerful and as far as I'm concerned they're the best selling speakers I've ever heard on a smartphone very good on bass on mids and the volume is really good as well now software wise we have the android 8.0 with samsung ux version 9 the phone is lightning smooth as you would expect from a device of this caliber of course i've already reduced the animation speed to 0.5 if i'm not mistaken yep 
Fold 3 have been changed to 0.5. The phone is probably one of the best Android flagships that you can go for in this first half of 2018. There are some other flagships on the way, such as the OnePlus 6, but still as a complete package, I think this Samsung is one of the best contenders for the top Android device of this year. You have quite a nice assortment of accessories directly in the box, which is quite a nice touch. Now we get to one of the most important disadvantages, which is the price. The normal S9 comes at a almost 1000 euros contract free. So it's definitely the most expensive Galaxy smartphone so far. This is priced like the Note 8, even though it's the smaller Galaxy S sibling. The S9 Plus easily surpasses the 1000 euros mark. And for this amount, you only get a, let's say, already proven design. This was to avoid saying recycled design. They haven't really done much to improve on the S8. They're probably saving their ammo for the S10 next year. And another part where this device suffers is the battery life, which is not the best around. Galaxy S8 didn't have the best battery life and this one doesn't have it either. We have a small battery, only 3000 mAh. The charger isn't the fastest around. It's one of the fastest, but not nearly the fastest on the market right now. If I'm being completely honest here, this Samsung Galaxy S9 isn't really a meaningful upgrade to anyone who already has the S8, but some users will choose to upgrade given the few benefits that this device brings. As a conclusion, you have a very interesting design, a very good screen, if not the best screen on the market. Performance is way, way above everything else in the Android world and the camera still has some functions which make this phone unique. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do press the like button. If you'd like to stay tuned to my content, also press the subscribe button which will be displayed right here in the bottom left part. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. Thanks a lot for your continuous support and for your interest in my channel. This was Mike the Tech Savvy with the Samsung Galaxy S9 review. I wish you a great day. Bye!